this is Greenow Farm. The Whites came into Greenow Farm as tenants in 1913. And we, we came in, we were fishermen and butchers before then, and one of the sons took some ground and then came into the farm. So we, were, we rented that. And then we, uh, we also rented another farm next door, both small farms, South Laws. And the opportunity came as sitting tenants in, in the 60s. Um, to buy green now, so we, we bought green now then, and uh, I had an opportunity in the 90s to buy the other one, and, and we bought South Laws as well. So it's a small family farm that we have here. I also contract farm, another bit of ground just 12 miles away at Gordon, um, which is, I uh, do the arable bit, and there is some grazing which we organise up there too. And we try to grow a, a, a good mixed rotation, uh, spring and winter crops. So we have winter oilseed rape, winter wheat, winter barley, then a spring barley, spring oats, and uh, spring beans as well. So we try and try and keep that rotation, and, and that spreads my well, it spreads the risk a bit too, but it also spreads the harvest. We're we're very lucky because we have very deep, rich soils here, um, but very mixed, and and not just mixed over the farm in each field. You know, um, we have everything from well, I have a pure sand. Um, it's called the sand pit, and they did actually quarry sand out of it, and um, right through to a marl pit as well so you know it's a sandy loam um, to a sort of mild clay loam. I was struggling with with workload with the plough system when I got the extra ground and so I was I was always thinking of trying how could I how could I do this slightly differently and I, I was finding that you know we, we reintroduced oilseed rape or introduced oilseed rape into the into the into the rotation and I was, you would take the crop off and the same with the beans and you would sort of look at the ground and think well actually I've got a lovely tilth there you know, I'm then going to turn that upside down and then beat it <laughs> with metal and try and create exactly what I've, I had in the first place. So I, I, I then thought, well, I must, I must try and get something that could put some wheat in after rape and maybe after the beans. And so that was how it started. I was looking for something that was on the shelf. And I continually, I did most of it online and just continually seemed to the Missouri name kept coming up. And, and all the pictures and the footage that I watched, it, it, it was very solidly made and, and I thought, well, you know, I, that would maybe take some of the risk out. Missouri themselves say, you know, about 60 horsepower a metre, um, but it, because it is doing, you know, a bit of work there. So I had 180 horse originally, which was really on that 60 a metre, but this is a bit bigger. This is a 234, so it's, uh, it's a bit more horsepower. So I have that luxury, but you know, you're, you're sitting maybe nine, ten kilometres an hour, um, and, and it'll do that comfortably. And I think even with a three metre machine, you can cover the ground quite quickly with that. The machine itself, uh, the Missouri, uh, this, uh, this is an option, but you have a leading disc. I've taken some of the discs off, just as a bit of a trial, just to see if I can get on just as well without the disc, because um, it's wearing metal at the end of the day. So you have a leading disc, which I've, I've sewn wheat into grass lays, and that is quite handy just for cutting the turf in it it doesn't give you that sort of throw uh, with the turf, but then you have your, your leading leg, which on this drill, it's a dual hopper drill, so it's seed fert. So your, your front hopper comes down there and goes down the back of the front leg through that boot. So uh, you can put your fertilizer. I've also done cover crops with it, and I've put, a, put uh, spring beans in the front leg. So the spring beans come down there, you can have them at three inches, four inches if you want, and then uh, the cereals out the, the normal coulter at a different depth. So I've done that in the past, but yeah, so you have your leading leg, then you have a consolidation wheel, which actually carries the weight of the drill, and uh, these ones lift up for transport, but that, that carries the drill. So that spreads the weight over the whole width of the drill. Then you come back here and you have the, the coulter. Now this is a, this is a dual coulter, so it's a, it's a 15 centimeter uh, width, so it comes down and it pushes it out into the corners of the band. Um, so that's a, a dual coulter and then a consolidation tire just to put a little bit of pressure so that it's not floating in, a, in an airy seed bed. And then we have uh, an option which I put on this one, which is a following harrow, just to, just to it, it makes a slightly ridged effect and I don't really mind that, but some people do. You have the harrow, it kind of levels that a little bit, and then I put the pelleter outlets on the back of the, of the harrow, so it, then we can put slug pellets, but also I've put clover um, out of those as a companion crop on my rape one year, 
and also you can use clover in your in your cover crops. So if you were doing a cover crop, you could have beans out the front leg at maybe three inches. You could have phacelia, vetch, whatever coming out of the coulter at an inch, and then you could have the clover out the pelleter. Well, this, this is the Missouri straw rake, and it does have a, a slight sprung angled disc on the front, which just throws that little bit of soil, just, just at a tiny depth, just that helps, you know, just to get a chit of, uh, of any volunteers, which is really one of the, one of the good things it does. But I, I really use it in my rape stubbles before I drill my wheat. Um, and I'm finding each, t if you, each time through, if you get some nice weather, I was finding very unscientifically, but I was finding it was halving the slug numbers, which was quite significant. Um, and, and anything that reduces, you know, slug pellet usage is obviously a good thing. So, I mean, this is, this is ideally, this would be my only form of cultivation. You know, I, I, th I would have the straw rake, my drill, my rollers, the tractor and myself. And last year that put in 80% of my crops winter and spring. I still plough, you know, I have winter barley after wheat. And because it's a, it's a, a distilling barley, you know, I, I, I don't want wheat growing in that. So the volunteers is a problem. So I, I do, if I'm fulling wheat, I have been ploughing. Although I'm going to try, you know, and get a good chip this year maybe and see if we can maybe do that without, without ploughing it. Well, I've found lots of benefits, um, you know, over the years. And I'm a one-man band, you know, so I, I try and do everything myself. And I was just finding it increasingly difficult. And you can get, you know, I was getting caught out with the weather. I was ploughing it sometimes and it was baking hard and sometimes it was getting soaking wet. And so the drill, when I even, when I had the single hopper, it just gave you that ability to cover more ground in the optimum uh, conditions. And which is, which is really the, one of the key things with it. It does give you the capacity to do an enormous amount. The fuel saved, you know, I'm using a third of the fuel um, to establish crops. So that's, that's more significant now with the price of fuel as well. Um, but I think, I think the soil has definitely become more workable, you know, there, there is more tilth and I think it is healthier. I took organic matter, I wish I'd done the whole farm actually when I bought the original drill, but I did, I did two of the worst fields that I was direct drilling that year. And I, I tested them, I think it would be five years later, and they'd gone up by 0.2. I always, I often say, you know, we all do minimum tillage. We all do the minimum amount of tillage that we think gives the desired effect. I think if you're thinking of, of going to direct drilling, you know, there's lots of choice now. And I got a demo and that, that, there is nothing like, I think, nothing like a demo on your own farm. And, and the machinery guys are prepared to do that. So, you know, I, I think there's a lot of benefit in that. And I did that and, and you know, I, I think, I think that to make an informed decision from that um, was a good idea. That's good, that's great. That's good to have that